What's up, guys? Artist Version 1 here, and welcome back to another edition of the Three-Way Dance Wrestling Podcast. And like always, you can't have the three-way dance without three of us. So joining me, as always, is Shelby, a.k.a. Shubs. Ayo. Suck it, Shubs. Um, <laughs> and joining me, as always, is Amadeus himself, Nick. Amadeus, Amadeus, or oh, 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 Amadeus. <laughs> and uh, we... We have a uh, uh, the usual show for you here tonight. We're gonna we're gonna all right, calm down there, Hoss. <laughs> Nick's just gonna um, hum in the background the whole time. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's not gonna throw us off or anything. Yeah. Um, so, okay, stop. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, of course, we're gonna play our games. We're gonna play it came from eBay and uh, the three word dance. Uh, we're gonna do a sports list of the week, which uh, I found, I found an interesting one. So that's going to be good. And we have some fresh new faces and questions. Cause I had to fucking threaten people to, that I was going to kill furry pets in order to get new people to answer questions. Uh, that's a shoot. Um, I was live last night. And I was like, if, if somebody new doesn't go leave a question, I'm going to go kill a cat. <laughs> and somebody was like, I like oh. cats. I was like, if you like cats. You better go leave a question. Next thing I see is boop is a question. Bob up. <laughs> I was like, all right, if we don't get somebody else, I'm going to go kill a cute, fluffy dog. Who, who's next? They're like, if you kill a dog, I'm going to have to boycott this channel. I was just like, well, you better go leave a question in. <laughs> Dude. So, got some fresh questions. Here. That, was, uh, that was a ballsy move. That's a ballsy move. It worked. A very ballsy <laughs> move. And we thank you for it. We thank those. Like, consider my we, past of, like, high V and shit. I think they know I'm serious. We thank those for leaving your additional questions. And no. No animals were harmed last evening. That, that I know we know anyway. Yeah. yeah, we can actually put that tag here. We can put no animals were harmed in the making of this podcast. I mean, they're not normally harmed either <laughs> that I know of. <laughs> Unless one of you is just like beating the shit out of your cat while you're like, talking. <laughs> I have no pets, so that's ah, not possible. Fair enough. Oh, my God. Ah. All right, so let's get into the news cycle here. Uh, so the first thing being um, Keith Lee who disappeared for a, a couple months there on us, finally revealed why he disappeared. We all thought it was like a contract issue or uh, something, a storyline issue or something. But no, it turns out he was actually battling death. He was at death's door, but just didn't ring the doorbell. Um, apparently he had like an enlarged heart of some sort and everything. And Makes Mia sense. Yim he is a big is, dude. Uh, Mia Yim, his wife slash girlfriend, it's still been unclear. I've heard wife recently, but now I, I, I've heard no reports on it. But she sacrificed her spot in the Royal Rumble, sacrificed her time on the road to stay home and take care of him, which, good on her. Mm. Um, but unfortunately, it does have a sad ending because Keith Lee returned uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he's been uh, been useless ever since. Didn't they have a fight for his name, too, while he that, was off? That's, that's what I heard, but I think it was yeah. all because of the heart thing. Maybe. Maybe they were just trying to get another story out there to cover up the heart thing until he said it. Maybe. Or maybe it actually happened while he was off as maybe. well. <laughs> I just hope that, you know, he, he's successful. Um, I like Keith Lee. Mm -hmm. Uh I, I saw people complaining that when he beat Karrion Cross a couple weeks ago, they're like, oh, 50-50 bookings back. And I, I wrote in there. I was just like, and y'all would be the same people bitching that if he would have lost, that he would have been ended. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much right. Well, all right. Not really a lot to talk about there. But next up here, this uh, we do have a little bit to talk about. A major SummerSlam match might be canceled. Uh oh. Y'all heard about this? No. Sasha and Bianca. Okay, I was just about to say, is Nick there? He hadn't said anything. Uh, <laughs> Sasha yeah, and sorry, Bianca. Sasha, if you're talking to that fucking girl again while you're doing this podcast, I swear to God. No, I, I was distracted by my notes. Sorry, we're okay. good. Okay. All right, but Sasha and Bianca might be off the table. They have missed the last two previous house shows slash live events, whatever you want to call them. So, um, it has not been officially announced yet or anything. We might know more information come Friday. But Sasha and Bianca might be off the table at SummerSlam. Uh, excited or no? So this is all just speculation because they haven't been at the house shows? 
Yes, they've missed yeah. two house shows in a row. Mm. I mean, I I think that's hard to say that they won't be at SummerSlam just because they're not on two house shows. But um, I mean, I'd I think I'd still like to see that match. So I hope they're not. Certainly. Well, I mean, I'd you know, like I'm, to I'm, see the match. I could really still give two shits about Bianca right now. I think well, she still yeah. needs time. Agreed. The but and also, I don't know. There's been a lot of weird news stories the past couple of days. Maybe this will happen. Maybe it won't. Maybe they'll be be there. Maybe they won't. They were on SmackDown, so I'm like, well, or were they on SmackDown? Maybe um, they were. Uh, Sasha. Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, because they did uh, Sasha and. Oh yeah, they did like an in ring thing. They did the whole famous, yeah, you know, okay. hey, it's a contract right. signing, and we're not going to do this this time. And then you know it happens. You know, shit breaks down. Yeah. If okay. there was any doubt in their minds that they weren't going to make SummerSlam, I think they would have already canceled the match already. No, I think considering they were considering Friday. the way considering the way things have been done lately, I think yeah, it would be Friday or Saturday during the pre-show. Yeah. Uh, breaking news, uh, Sasha Banks and Bianca Belair can't be here tonight, uh, so there'll be no SmackDown Women's Championship match. What do you say about this, Pete Rosenberg? Oh, well, dirt, 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 dirt. <laughs> So instead of giving you Sasha versus Banks, we are going to put on uh, the, who are two job guys right now? Uh, we'll put on Otis and Montez Ford on the pre-show. There you go. No, not even the pre-show. They'll put. They have to replace a match on the main card. Oh, we'll give oh, you a yeah. Seth Alexander versus Shelton Benjamin. That's what we'll give you. <laughs> a dated feud that they haven't even have, they haven't even been on TV since the fans came back. If you don't count main event, then no, they haven't been on TV. But if you count main event, then yes, they have. Um, <sighs> but nobody counts. Um, next up in the news here, we have a new champion, guys. Yeah. Christian Cage became the new Impact Champion, defeating Kenny Omega on the debut episode of AEW Rampage, which, side note, mm-hmm. drew 750,000 viewers. Um, Look in my eyes, what do you see? A wrestler drawing 1.3. I'm sorry, I had to do that. I, oh. <laughs> I but, that that's why he's been quiet. I'm he's just sorry. been trying to figure out where he's he not can put that there. in. <laughs> but no, here's, here's, why I I that because, here's why I mentioned that because Friday was the debut of Rampage. Saturday, I believe, Saturday or Sunday, one of those two days, was uh, Triple mm-hmm. Mania, Mexico's WrestleMania, so to speak, where Kenny yeah. Omega defended the AAA Mega Heavyweight Championship against uh, Andrade El Idolo or whatever. Uh, apparently, the original plan was for Andrade to go over, but. They did not want to give Kenny Omega two lo- two big losses in a row. And even Kenny Omega stepped up and said, hey, I'll drop the title to him. It's no problem. Uh, but yeah. to, it was some executive who said, no, we can't have you do two big losses in a row. So they went with um, Omega retaining. Um, smart move or no? No. Really no, and it's, awesome. Yeah, and it's not even hating on Kenny Omega. Like, that just would have put over Andrade huge, right? Mm. Like, oh, I yeah. think they should. And it would, it would I mean, for, I think he's going to be AEW champion for a while. At least if a CM Punk or Daniel Bryan comes in, he'll probably lose it to them. But if not, then it's going to be a while before he loses the belt. So, I mean, him losing those two there. I, I mean, see. I think. I'm sorry, thinking ahead, Omega's Nick. holding on to it. Uh, sorry, I'm thinking Omega's holding on to it until Hagman is good to go, like, and he's going to be he's on like, the road again. I don't know if you have this in your news, but do you have the news about him going on? Uh, is it paternity leave, where the father leaves? Yes, um, but that's what I'm saying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, yes, because that's six months, okay. right? Hold on, just a second. Just hold yeah, on, yeah. Hold on. Not okay. in the states. Um, Hold on. Um, Not in the states. It's a lot shorter than that. Uh, I can't tell if he's ribbing no. me now. No, no, I don't have that. I can't tell if he was ribbing me or not. I just want to see how long I can keep the paper shuffling, but you just want to shut the fuck up so you can hear the paper shuffling. <laughs> um. 
Yeah, I don't know. And, like, I don't know. The way that Adam Page has been booked, I don't know if I really care about him being champion anymore. If if they were going to give I, it to him, they should have given it to him by now, or they should have kept him away from it and built him. And just throwing him in with the Dark Order just kind of killed him, I think. I do agree with that to an extent. I just I don't think I can get behind... I don't think I can get behind CM Punk or Daniel Bryan immediately being in contention wow. for the A title. God like, damn I it, just CM Punk is not coming to AEW. <laughs> you know, I hate to say it, I'm starting to believe it. I'm not there yet, but I'm I'm pretty. I'm close. not there yet. I'm not there yet, and I really want to see even MJF troll everybody and come out to call the personality and be like, "Come out on TV before I say like, oh, he is." Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Um, now saying that though, too, if Omega had have lost to Andrade, I think it could have made for a better story going into All Out that Omega has to has to now do whatever he can to keep the AEW title that way you can still you can still have I don't want to say heat but you can still have you still have an out for Christian that way and losing that match Mm -hmm. it doesn't hurt Omega to have lost to Andrade and it also makes Omega that much more of a heel I guess if he were to then win like Callus or fucking the Kukamonga kids or whoever gets involved. Okay. And also, I wanted to mention that uh, Rampage, you know, they made such a big deal about this new Rampage show. One, I didn't know that it was going to be an hour long show. And two, only the debut episode and the upcoming episode are going to be live. Everything after that's going to be taped. So I mm. want to... Are you I'm serious? interested in that, though, that serious. it's only an hour. Because, yeah. like, two-hour shows are just too much for me these days. Like, mm-hmm. the occasional pay-per-view is fine, but to sit there and watch two hours of wrestling for, like, straight is just hard. Uh, speaking of AEW, though, th- this is kind of news, kind of a story. But uh, as you guys know, my buddy Justice, who I've mentioned before, um, he actually does uh, charity wrestling shows. He books charity wrestling shows. And the first one he ever did, um, he was scouting talent. And... Uh, considering my large knowledge of wrestling, he would send me videos of like no name guys, and uh, at the time there were no names because a lot of a lot of guys that he sent me or have made a name for themselves now, like Sunny Kiss. He sent me a video of Sunny Kiss before he was a name. Maria Manic uh, sent me a video of her before she was a name. But he also sent me the video of, of one particular gentleman, um, and I, I saw his video and I was like, wow, he's actually not not too bad. You know, he, he he's good. You know, he's pretty good. My buddy Justice booked him. And he drove all the way from the state of Oklahoma to North Carolina to work for a hundred bucks. Wow! And uh, yeah, he did. He did the show and everything, lit it up and everything. And now that particular gentleman is uh, signed to the second largest wrestling company in the world, and that being uh, Fuego del Sol. Hmm. Oh Fuego, wow! Fuego del Sol was signed to AEW Friday night. Um, but yeah, uh, just, my buddy Justice sent me a video of him years ago, and was just like, "What do you think of this guy?" And I watched a video of like him in like a high school gym wrestling. You know, I was like, <laughs> "Yeah, he's not too bad. He's pretty good. You should book him." So he booked him, and the guy worked for a hundred dollars, drove himself there, didn't ask for travel, drove wow. himself to North Carolina, did the show for a hundred bucks, and now worked his way all the way up to be an AEW All Elite Superstar or whatever. So there you go. Yeah. Mm, cool. All right. And the next one here. Oh, my God. I can't wait to hear what y'all have to say about this one. NXT is not the only show that's in for some changes. But so oh, is no. 205 Live. Oh, okay. And 205 Thank Live is also now going to feature some heavyweights. <laughs> <laughs> WWE presents the X Division. <laughs> hey, hey, that's actually not a bad idea. That is, uh, that's, that's the word. That's, that's the word. They're, 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 they're the purple brand, as they said. The purple brand will now feature superstars that weigh over 205. Sometimes, and that's <laughs> happened before, where uh, they would use superstars, you know, to do their dusty classic or the breakout tournament as of late. But now it's going to be a permanent thing. 
So, like, why the hell is the show called 205 Live? It's just well, a, live now. It, well, A, it's 205 Live, and it's already recorded, so it should be called 205 Recorded. Um, <laughs> secondly, if it's 205 Live and they have heavyweights and shit like that, like, what's the point of the 205? Call it 05. Oh, 205, 305, 405. <laughs> just, just everybody so on the, sh- everybody who's on the show that week, just take their combined weight and just make it, you know, 625 live. <laughs> next week, there's only those, one. There's only next one. Week you person, have those so guys, and then next week the show is uh, 535 live. You know? <laughs> and then when it gets canceled, it's 05, 0.5 live. Oh, no. <laughs> God, just cancel that fucking show. And when, it's, and when it's just when it's just one guy on the show, it's just Kushida live. Kushida live on tape. Kushida versus broomsticks all night. Kushida oh. versus... Defending the Kurtzwick title against a rat. <laughs> the rat doesn't now, even he, show up. He picks up. out like a real live audience member, not like a plant, but like a real live audience member, and just beats the shit out of him. <laughs> Oh my God, he'd get so much heat. Jesus uh, Christ! In the final bit of news I have down here, I don't know much about this gentleman, but um, so I can't say that we lost the real one. But apparently, the wrestling world has lost Dominic Danucci in the past week. Oh, so this seems this. like up the route. I heard about this. I don't know exactly who he is though, but I oh, heard about it on the. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I heard about it on Cornette's podcast. Nick, and I, I think I've heard the name too. I've heard the name, and apparently it's yeah. significant, but I don't know anything yeah, he's, about. Yeah, he's like one of those old school guys, like around when San Martino and shit were very popular. Yeah. Um, but I, was, I I know nothing about him to sit here and be like, okay, top five Danucci matches, go. Oh, you know, here we go. So I have a little bio for him. I'll keep it short, sweet. Um, an Italian American professional. Just write this up. Oh. I just I just looked at Wikipedia. Oh, okay. uh, Italian American professional wrestler. Don't look up trans- on Wikipedia. You're making a mockery of this fucking podcast, man. <laughs> Trainer better know it under his ring name of Dominic Danucci. Uh, his name's Domenico Nick Nucaroni, I think. Uh, he held over a dozen championships across the world in the 1960s and 70s. His wrestling students include Mick Foley, Shane Douglas. And Brian Hildebrand, who I've also heard of, but don't know a whole lot about. Wow, he only trained three guys. Wow, incredible. Well, that's included. Uh, he probably trained other people, too. <laughs> oh, okay, well, Dominic Danucci no longer with us. Uh, and plus, you know, since I collect autographs and everything now, I have seen him pop up a few times in the autographs. So I'm like, who the hell is this guy? Yeah, you yeah. Know? You know, so. He's a guy All that right. like learn a lot more about, I'll tell you that much. Yeah, it seems like that's why I was like, I figured yeah. when I wrote it, I wasn't going to I wasn't going to include it for the sole fact that like I was like, I knew nothing about him. But then yeah. I was just like, there might be that one asshole out there that will post this. And they're like, you didn't even talk about Dominic Danucci. You know, so I was like, <laughs> add it. I was yeah. like, add it. And I'm more than likely Shelby will know what the, who the hell he is. But you failed me. Yeah, I did. He also yeah. trained Moondog Spot, by the way. Oh, okay. yeah. All right, and that's all the news I could really find that was really noteworthy. Um, um, oh, I'd one, like to one add noteworthy thing I want to. Oh no, that's not true. We do have one more piece of news I do want to mention. Some SummerSlam implications uh, coming from the Evolution. Yes. <laughs> so added to SummerSlam will be Eva Marie. <laughs> I just hear the disappointment from Nick. <laughs> added to SummerSlam will be Eva Marie versus Alexa Bliss. That is all. Look, cool. look, two features of that match are in one of my answers to a question later on. I'd also like to add that Brian Nobbs has been hospitalized with serious stomach issues. I so, did see that, well, yeah. Uh, and Brian Nobbs being one of, like, believe it or not, Brian Nobbs one of my favorite wrestlers, like, ever. Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. I, don't get me wrong, I love Sags, but, like, uh, and I knew of the Nasty Boys, but, like, I grew up in like that late nineties era wrestling when Brian Knobs became like a single star in WCW. So I became like a real big Brian Knobs mark and shit. So, hmm. yeah. All right. So that was the news this week here. And we're going to play our games that we usually play next, but not before we talk about one of the few sponsors that we have here on the three-way dance wrestling podcast. And that one being rep sports.com. 
And RepSports.com has many great products to choose from. I mean, you have the Broken Arrow pre-workout powder. We have the uh, the Raise Energy Drink. We have the Hyper Sleep that puts you down easy for a nice, easy sleep right there. Uh, and they come in the Raise Energy Drink comes in many different flavors. Um, but in the in the description of this podcast, I have to tell you something. I've been telling you guys for weeks. If you click in the description of this podcast, you get a free four pack of Raise Energy. But guess what? I've been lying to you. Not only do you click that and get a free four pack of Raise Energy, that includes Sour Gummy Worm, Baja Lime, Voodoo, and Shelby's favorite flavor, Galaxy Burst. I don't cue. Hey. Um, not only will you get that, but you will also get four, four packets of the Broken Arrow pre-workout. And if that wasn't enough for you, you're oh also going to get, yeah. Oh, there's more. Wait, there's more. Wait, yeah, there's more. more. You're also going to get two packets. You're also going to get two packets of the hypersleep. 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 And on top of that, really energetic sleeping. No, it puts you down for a nice, easy sleep. Like I've said hundreds of times on this podcast already. Oh, I'm a little thick. Uh, And also, you (laughs) get two packets. Mm -hmm. You will get two packets of Raise Energy on the go, which is the powder form of the Raise Energy drink. And if that wasn't enough for you, if you're still sitting there like, I don't know if I if I want to get this Raise Energy drink, I don't know if I'm cut out for this or anything. Well, Rep Sports has also thrown in a free ten dollar gift card to their website, and all you have to do is cover the shipping, which is nine ninety nine. So you're pretty much getting your ten bucks back. In the gift card form. That's too much free stuff, man. Exactly. My mind is just blown. I know. Too much free stuff. Yeah. I didn't know there was such free stuff, man. There's no much, there's no such thing as too much free stuff. So if you click that link in the description, all you got to do. You didn't have him flabbergasted. Yeah. All you got to do is let them know artists from the three-way dance sent you. Uh, Just uh, make sure to click that link. And when it asks you for a coupon or checkout code use artists and you will get all that for free except just pay the shipping and uh all that will be right on your door and if you like that you can also get cases of the raise energy drink and get cases of sour gummy worm you can get uh baja lime south beach you can get you missed your cue shelby you missed your fucking cue i did not i there's you gotta pause you gotta hold up off for a second you got it you, you got it you, it wasn't long enough because you can also get you got to allow flavor the climate. in the entire world that has ever existed galaxy burst all this and more at repsports.com all right all right so let's get over to it came from ebay which believe it or not something i never thought i would ever say is that shelby has the lead Hell yeah. Uh, but <laughs> we're going to see if uh, old Nick here can uh, tie it up here. So where is that one at that I wanted to do? Is that on the other? I think that's in my other notebook. Okay, but I remember the price for it. So I'm going to do that one. Um, oh, no, here it is right here. Okay, there it is. All right. So this this first one's a weird item, man. Uh, while looking up these items on eBay, you come across some weird stuff and everything. This one was pretty weird. Did you guys know that WWE does not own the donate domain name for WCW Monday Nitro.com? Wow. They don't. I think I did know that. Well, uh, man, you didn't know how to ruin a fucking setup, man. I, I swear. But you can now own that domain name if you so choose. You can own WCWMondayNitro.com. I don't know why you couldn't put anything on it. Um, <laughs> but you can own that domain name via eBay. Uh, so, Shelby, how much is WCWNitro.com, the domain name, going for on eBay? Hmm. I'm not familiar with how much websites cost in general, but... Uh... I can go 500 bucks. Okay. And Nick, how much is the domain name for WCWMondayNitro.com going for on eBay? 10 bucks. 
Uh, Nick, you get it because it is only going for forty four dollars and ninety nine cents. <laughs> way overshot. Uh, yeah. <laughs> way overshot. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, let's go with, uh, what was this one? Okay. All right. This one, this one's kind of cool. You guys remember the, uh, the view masters? You guys remember those? No. Yep. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Who said no? I wish I still had mine, think? man. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't know what view masters are where you have like the little thing and then you put like the, the wheel in and then you oh. click the picture. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I don't know what they're called in Canada. Viewmaster A? Is that what they're called? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly oh, it. You no, didn't they're say still the called so Viewmaster, bitch. I'm pretty sure they have oh. a different name, don't they? No, Maybe they have like a alternate masters. name. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, well, I found, on, I found on eBay a sealed pack of WWF Wrestling Superstars Viewmaster reels. It is a pack of that's three, cool. still sealed. Yeah, I have a Viewmaster, but I'm not paying this price for them. Uh, uh, for three reels of them. So, yeah. Nick, how much are the WWF Wrestling Superstars? This is like, um, and I didn't write down the year, but if I'm not mistaken, it's like uh, uh, at least 85 to like 88, somewhere in that time frame. So, how much? It's basically the Wrestling Superstars logo that you would see on the old LJN rubber action figures. It's that logo. Oh, yeah. So that time frame. So how much are the WWF Wrestling Superstars Viewmaster reels that are sealed going for on eBay? Excuse me. 72.49. 72.49. Okay. And Shelby, how much are they going for? 70 bucks. <laughs> You're an asshole. Are you fucking kidding me? Shelby got it too. Because <laughs> they're, right they're going for they're going for thirty four ninety five. <laughs> How did Shelby get it? If I said seventy two forty nine, and he's oh he said seventy. Yeah, yeah. He went over. <laughs> yeah, we don't play the go over uh -huh. thing. So, like always, now it comes down to the ass blaster. <laughs> I think that went the reverse way. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> so, um, uh, Shelby, I'm going to give you a choice of a different kind of choice here. I'm either going to give you a choice of a WCW item, a WWF video item, or a WWF apparel item. Video. Okay. This is a sealed VHS copy of WWF In Your House Mind Games 1996. And if I remember correctly, this is the main event being Shawn Michaels versus Mankind for the WWF yes. Championship. Mankind's first WWE title match in WWF. So, Shelby, how much is the sealed WWF In Your House Mind Games 1996 VHS VHS videotape going for sealed on eBay. I regret choosing video. I really do. Because, like, I feel like if you spend thousands of dollars on this, you are wasting your money. But I have a feeling that's what it's going for. Oh, God. Because um, ass blasters are usually really high. Not necessarily, though. I think there was one one week that wasn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was Cherry's like bathing suit or something. No, I don't even know if it was that. There might have been two. Um, but uh, fuck, I'm gonna go a thousand. One thousand. All right. And Nick, how much is the? You know the spiel. I'm not gonna do it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. Twelve hundred. Well, guess what? This is where one of y'all say what. <laughs> what? Hold on, let me get to my page here. Well, guess what? Cool. I'm not ready. <laughs> let me get to my page here. <laughs> uh, Shelby's up by two points. Holy shit. Because believe it or not, 
this VHS tape, a VS VHS tape, a videotape. Okay. Now let me before I even tell you the price. Let me tell you my philosophy on VHS tapes. I don't care what the fuck's on them. Okay. Unless it's like something that's not on DVD or like openly available. Like I can you know I can sign up for WWE Peacock right now and yeah. fucking get it for nine ninety nine and shit. My, my limit on VHS tapes is two bucks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. If it's something that's not on DVD, something kind of rare, I'll go as high as five. Okay? Yeah. WWF, In Your House, Mind Games, 1996, VHS sealed. The price on eBay was $999.95. Oh, my Somebody God. Somebody has some really big problems if they're going to pay that. Well, so, like, here's the thing. Somebody has some really big dreams. That's if that, that tape stuff. even works, and there's a very high chance it doesn't. Oh, no, it works. It, the the it probably works because it's sealed. The question is, find oh, a yeah, fucking star player. Yeah, not only that, that but works. like it's limited time use. Like eventually, it is gonna break. It's not like digital media where it's always there. Yeah, like, like videotapes were not that great, really. <laughs> Even a DVD is better, and I wouldn't spend that much money on a DVD. Oh no. All right, so that was it. Came from eBay, and Shelby is now up ten to twelve. Feels Who would good. have ever thought that? Feels good. Feels good. He's going to soak it in, too, man. <laughs> but now that leads us to our other game that we play where uh, oh, Nick God. actually has the lead, and he's far ahead on that game. <laughs> yeah. So that, that'll make him feel good. And that is the three-word dance. That is where I give uh, Nick and Shelby here three words that relate to a wrestler, and it's their job to figure out who it is I'm talking about. And it's a free-for-all. We don't go in turns here, but we do do three of them. Because it's the three-word dance on the three-way dance. Um, so, the first one here, let's have a little fun. The first one here for your three-word dance is going to be Shake. Cisco. Sorry, can you say that word again? Cisco. Cisco? Cisco. And point. How do you spell Cisco? Cisco. S I S Q O. As in thong song, Cisco. But like, okay, what are the words again? Cisco point. Shake. Rikishi. No. Cisco. Oh, fuck, that was my only guess. Oh, shit. Cisco. Cisco is the word that's throwing me off because once I explain it, Cisco Inferno. Wow, Shelby, there you go. Holy shit! What shake? Because uh, you know he would always wear shaker booty on his tights. Point because you know he did the point. Yeah. And Cisco because for a time in WCW he changed his name to D I S Q O as a play on Cisco. Ugh. Because at the time, Cisco was popular for that, you know, month. Um, the fuck is Cisco? Oh, the thong song. You the never thong heard the thong song? The thong Let song? Let me see that thong. Baby. No. That thong, oh thong, thong, thong. <laughs> You own a radio? Shelby, what the fuck? I mean, right. yeah, man. We listen to classic rock. I know, but still, man, you don't know the thong, thong was thong? inescapable. I don't think so. There was like starving Ethiopian children that knew thong song. This would have been like late 90s, early 2000s. 2002, man. 2002. 2002. Baby, yeah, no, I... that thong, that thong, thong, thong. No, I like at that point. I like it just been go. like my parents listen to classic Baby, rock. Baby, go. They even mentioned it in Dodgeball. Really? Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. like, I'll put on the thong song and you guys can just hang out. Huh. Maybe yeah, I need to is, like... Which is even weirder that. because that movie's supposed to take place in 1994. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> is it really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, but Shelby still got it. So the score is now Nick has 10, Shelby has 5, and No Contest has 11. So if uh, Nick can get one more, he'll tie No Contest here. Um, yeah. Mm. All right, so I'll downgrade it a little bit. I'll go to one that I, I believe is easy. Sometimes I think these are easy, and then you two are like, "Dang butterflies!" You know, so um, butterflies. 
Your three words are. And before I even say these three words, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not Daniel Bryan. Okay. Uh, Is it Bryan Danielson, though? No. No <laughs> variation of him at all. So your three CM words Punk. are. CM your three words are yes. No. Alfalfa. Kane. No, what? <laughs> yes and no. Alfalfa. Oh, shit. Our truth. What? I thought he had an alfalfa joke at some point. I feel like he did do a rap or something with the word alfalfa in it, or the likeness of alfalfa. Or maybe, no, he called somebody buckwheat. Never mind. No, oh, yeah, mind. okay, that's it, yeah. Um, yeah. He called somebody buckwheat. The wrong little rascal. Yeah. Yes. Uh, no. Uh, alfalfa. Alfalfa. And I guess an unspoken rule of the three word dance is that you do get one hint if you need it. Yeah. You cool with the hint, Nick? Um, yeah. Okay. Your hint for this one would be haircut. Kazarian. No. Damn. Man, you said that with some pride, too. Like, you fucking knew it. <laughs> well, just because I hear haircut and I immediately think of Kazarian being asked to cut his hair, he said no and they fired him. <laughs> <laughs> Brutus Beefcake. Can you be more specific? Uh, Brutus the Barber Beefcake? Can you be more specific? Ed uh, Leslie. Can you be more specific? The Booty Man. Can you be more specific? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I unfor usually I can give it to you with other gimmick names, but this this one I can't do it. Shit. It's the WCW one, isn't it? Yep. Oh fuck. Oh um shit. Yes. No alfalfa in your clue being haircut. Uh, oh, what was his name? <sighs> God damn it. All right, you both got, you oh. both said the guy playing it. I'll, I'll give you both a point. All right. It was Zodiac. Oh, that's okay. the, yeah, uh, Zodiac, yeah. Zodiac. Y'all were getting every name he had except for that <laughs> one, man. I'm surprised one of y'all didn't say fucking fur face, man. You know? <laughs> that would have been. <laughs> All right, let's see. one more. Let's make it. Let's make it a good one here. Um, yeah, I wrote down some new ones today. That's what I sat in the basement and did today. Mm. Um, okay. All right, let's really crank it up here. Well, it's the big show. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Your three words are dance. Dance? Dance. Okay. Green, as in the color. Mm -hmm. And punch. <laughs> Nick's going to laugh. Uh, bubbles from Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> No. <laughs> Hurricane Helms. No. Um. The Spirit yeah. Squad. No. Dance, Green, and Punch. Shane McMahon. No. X Pac? No. I was just naming people with green clothes. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> you need a hint? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Your sure. hint is Backstreet Boys. Evan Courageous? No. Shannon Moore. No. <sighs> 
Scotty too hot. No. Brian Christopher. No. Mean Street oh, Posse. Damn, I've run through all the dancing fools. Oh my god. No, not Mean Street Posse. Dance, green, punch. And your clue is Backstreet Boys. Hell, NSYNC 2. Okay, but I already named all the members of Three Count, and it's not any of them, so like... Did you name all the members of Three Count, though? Shane Helms. No. Because I said Hurricane Helms, and you said no. No. And it's not Shannon Moore, and it's not Evan Courageous. No. Is it Prince Iakea? Oh my god, no! You're right there! Alice Wright. Alice Wright. No, not Alex Wright. Oh, my God. Fuck. You're right there, man. <sighs> um, I'm giving you 15 seconds, and then I'm calling it. So, fuck. Steve Richards. No. Finley. No. <laughs> <laughs> Ernest Miller. All right, time. Norman no contest. Smiley. Norman Smiley. <laughs> no, no. Dance, green, punch. Nick, you were right there, man. Dance, of course, dancing. Okay. Green, green circles. Okay. Punch. Finishing move was a punch. Tank Abbott. He oh. was the member I couldn't think of. That's why I was like, did you really name all the members, Nick? I was like, he's right there. When you were like, Evan Courageous, no. Shannon Moore, no. I was like, oh, he's got it right here, right here. And you're like, Scotty too hotty? I was like, oh, there we go. We're out. <laughs> he was right there, man. So close. Damn. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I forgot the new total. Uh, the new total is now Nick has 11. Shelby has six because I gave him one for the uh, the Brutus Beefcake one. And no contest is up on y'all at 12. Fucking no contest. <laughs> I've got two for you this time. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot Nick has some uh, three-word dances here. So let's see what you got. Okay, for the first one I have is, so the first word is Pitbull. Okay. Second word is security. Jamie Noble. Uh, well, fuck. My third word was agent, but yeah. Uh, and then the second one I have for you, the first word is family. Second word is mask. And third word is warning. Ooh. Family, mask, warning. That's the word that's throwing me. Because I was going to go Rey Mysterio. But warning doesn't make any sense. Family mask. Or, give me a hint. Um, his brother is currently one of the top WWE superstars. His brother is currently one of the top WWE superstars. And it was mask, family, family warning. Mask. You know, I'm going to take a stab in the dark here. I'm going to say Rosie. Yep. Oh, wow. Hey. Family, because of the NOI family. Mm -hmm. uh, mask, because of his mask. Three minute warning. Yeah, um, and Roman Reigns is his brother, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, how do you like that? Yep. Come in my house, you're going to eat the food the way I fucking like it. He, you're not making food, though. You I'm confused. That, uh, and then you'd have to try and ship it over the border and <laughs> waiting. Is it waiting? It tastes very well. I actually get that quote from a uh, TV show called uh, True Blood that used to air on a uh, HBO. Uh, uh, HBO used to have a lot of uh, great television shows. Some of them are uh, 
you know, hard to find. But speaking of hard to find. <laughs> uh, That's a good transition. I know. <laughs> so speaking of hard to find, we got to talk about one of our sponsors, which is hardtofindtv.com and their sister site, fanmadedvd.com, where if you go over there, they have literally thousands of titles for you to choose from of those hard to find TV classics. Uh, I mean, stuff like, you know, Clueless, the TV show. Um, I mean, they have on DVD, you can get a copy of the failed re- reboot of the Munsters, Mockingbird Lane. You can get the MTV series, Eye Candy. They, they have plenty of great shows for you to choose from. And you can get them on DVD or Blu-ray. You can get them with subtitles in any language you want. Okay. And you can get them for a great price too. But if you head on over there and you're like, hey, this price is great, but it ain't great enough. Well, then, hey, you can use my checkout code artist at checkout, A R T I S T, and save 15% on your entire order. And they ship worldwide. Uh, now, payment is a little bit different there. So if you go to hardtofindtv.com and you do find something you like, you can only use Amazon Pay on hardtofindtv.com, which is awesome if you have Amazon Pay and want to use it. But if you want to open up the old wallet and whip out the credit card there, well, then you're going to have to head on over to fanmadedvd.com and uh, use your credit card there to complete your purchase. But the checkout code will work on either one of the websites. Um, it will work on any website. Well, I wouldn't say any website. I mean, I mean, hell, you could try it on Amazon. I can't guarantee it's going to work. Um, but head on over to hardtofindtv.com and fanmadedvd.com. Find you that old TV classic that you've been looking for. They do take requests. If you find something, if for some reason you look through all the thousands of titles they have and you find something and you're like, hey, they don't have anything I want, email them. They're very open to requests. They will find it. Slap it on a DVD or Blu-ray for you. And if for some reason they say, hey, we can't find it. What I like to say is if they don't have it, you don't need it. All of this and more at hardtofindtv.com and their sister site, fanmadedvd.com. All right, next up. Now, what we're going to do tonight is, because uh, I I literally thought this was going to be the SummerSlam episode. Uh, so I literally just had to throw together an episode. So I figured, why not live in a fantasy world where AEW is copying WWE, which why they would ever do that, I don't know why. Um, but we figured Dynamite now has its own roster and Rampage now has its own roster in this fantasy world. So I have taken over Dynamite and Nick and Shelby, much like they did SmackDown a couple episodes ago or a few episodes ago, they have taken over Rampage. So we are going to do a draft and have such a large roster that we did 30 guys and only eight women because their women roster is very small. I'm pretty sure it's going to become a bloodbath at women. Um, (laughs) Maybe even men. I don't know. Depends on who we wrote down for men. And before going, uh, before recording, I should say, I was like, hey, we need a way to figure out who goes first. And they're like, just go first. So I don't know whether or not to be scared or not. Um, <laughs> so let's go ahead. Uh, I think we'll, I think we'll go ahead and do, just do one at a time. You know, see how yeah. long it lasts. If we need to speed yeah. it up, we'll speed it up. So I think, as no surprise, my number one overall draft pick or AEW Dynamite will be the Omega Man himself, Kenny Omega. Damn it, we lost our janitor. You know, that's not well, I, funny. They, <laughs> they do call him the cleaner, you know. Yeah, I was actually going to do a whole spiel on that. <laughs> but that is okay. That is okay. Because Nick allowed me to do the first pick for Rampage. Mm. And we are going to draft Nick the jobber jackson we need enhancement talent we need enhancement so. talent nick jackson's gonna put a lot wow. of people over okay, he was only 25 on my list okay yeah. <laughs> interesting uh well since you know you want enhancement talent over there i i want i want stars over here on dynamite so the number two draft pick for AO, aew dynamite will be hold on Hold on a second. Sorry about that. I'm a little thirsty. Mm. Oh, yeah. That tastes freshly squeezed. We draft Orange Cassidy. I'm so sorry, Nick. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he okay, wanted to well, put Orange Cassidy uh, at number one, and I convinced him to put Nick Jackson in because I didn't think he'd take Orange Cassidy first. <laughs> fuck. That sucks. Well, uh... 
was the first pick for the AEW Rampage women's roster. And the second pick overall for AEW Rampage. We pick Chris Statland. Oh, you rat bastard. That was my number one woman, too. You fucking rat bastard. <laughs> oh, you ha. fucking son of a bitch. Okay. You want to play that? All right. So for the okay, you know what? I would draft my woman next, but you know what? Just just to really piss Nick off even more, my number three draft pick for AEW, Luchasaurus. He's not even in my top thirty-eight. What? You yeah, like love say. Luchasaurus. You love Luchasaurus. I love Jungle Boy love more. Luchasaurus? You love yeah, him but I love Jungle Boy more. I love Jungle Boy more, but that's not our next pick. Our next pick is Britt Baker. Damn it, that was my number two. I should have went with Britt Baker, but I was like, no, let me shove it to Nick and fucking pick Luchasaurus. But <laughs> all right, fuck that. Before you even before you even take any more women, um, my next pick for AEW uh, will take former AEW Women's Champion in Hikaru Shida. Uh, I think she was on here. Yeah, we had her number 12. Oh, okay. I had, yeah, I, yeah. I had Chris Statlander at number one and Britt Baker at number two. Damn. Yeah. yeah I'd, like to, uh, like I'd like to do the next one here, Nick. And uh, I'm jumping yeah, ahead yeah. to number 38, to be honest, just because he's got to be part of our roster. Oh, okay. um, yeah. And AEW's Rampage are for ravishing, I suppose. Uh, is going to be best wishes, Tully Blanchard. <laughs> and we are drafting him specifically because every time somebody gets let go from AEW Rampage or gets drafted to AEW Dynamite, however this works, he's going to sign their shoe uh, best wishes. That's that's wow. going to be their official paperwork. Okay. And then every day I'm going to get him to write me a note that says special wishes, just because I love best <laughs> wishes Tully Blanchard. Hey, Tully, how you doing today? Can you write that note for me? Really? Again? <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, Tully, do it! <laughs> Can you sign my shoe for the 50th time? <laughs> how many pairs of shoes do you own? <laughs> I keep right. buying some. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Number four draft pick for AEW Dynamite. Uh, one half of a tag team. Um, we select Pentagon. <laughs> okay. Um, well, for our next pick, we take uh, the Redeemer. He has a flexible wife. Miro. Miro? Did I, did I have him? Did you say you took Penta? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I didn't have Miro written down as like a fucking reserve. Okay. No, that didn't bother me. Hmm. Um, y'all are up two women on me. So, let me throw in a woman here because I doubt you're going to take my number five. I'd, I'd be shocked if you did. Um, but... Uh, AEW Dynamite selects another former AEW Women's Champion. We select the Native Beast, Nyla Rose. This wasn't even on my list. Um, our next selection for AEW Rampage is going to be the Spanish God, Sammy Guevara. Did I have him? I did not. Okay, that works out. All right, uh, coming in at number five on the, well, my male list, I should say. Um, coming in at number five will be the de facto, I, I call him the de facto leader because, I mean, he was essentially the leader before they had a leader. Uh, but the de facto leader of the Dark Order, AEW takes Evil Uno. Okay. You want to get the next one? Sure. Because I don't. Well, sure. Yeah. What direction you want to go with that? You don't want to go with that? 
Uh, well, no, like whatever direction you want to go, because I mean, we've already gone with our number ten, and we've already and gone with number, number six. So we're, we've got we've got seven and eight. Yeah, and nine's gone. Thirty-eight's gone. Yeah. So I mean, it's up to you. You know what? Fuck it, because I still really enjoy his work, and I think he is one of the best workers in AEW. His booking is just horrid, and I don't know if that's his fault or or anybody else's, but uh, I'm going Cody. Okay. It was one of my reserves, so I'm not too upset. Um, well, much like SmackDown used to try and be the land of opportunity, I want to try and make AEW the land... Oh, sorry, didn't mean to hit the mic. I want to make AEW the land of opportunity, and I want to give this guy a huge opportunity. He likes milkshakes. His favorite color is blue. We draft Nick Camarado. Okay. He was, he was on our... Is that the beast? All right, on next. Yeah. Ah, oh, damn. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to say with our next pick... <sighs> Fuck it. I need more enhancement talent. We need more enhancement talent. Mm, and mm, well, mm. he initially was going to be an alternate. I mean, we need dark match enhancement talent. So his brother gets the curtain jerk and he gets the dark badge. We take Matt Jackson. Perfect. That was, my, that was my 24 and 25 was the Bucks. When I originally came up with this idea, the first words out of fucking Shelby's mouth was, well, we're not we're not drafting the Bucks. Um, <laughs> and then I thought it'd be funny to make the Bucks and, and Kenny Omega just like random people. Like, we didn't have Matt Jackson on the list. We had Nick and he's the jobber. And then Kenny Omega, I just thought would be a great janitor. <laughs> Anyways. Well, I have two open spots. And instead of going with my original number seven, I'm going to I'm gonna grab an alternate here to fill one of the uh, the, the Buck spots here. And I'm, I'm actually surprised that you guys haven't taken them yet. I'm actually surprised. Um uh, this is a man that I think should have been AEW champion already. And uh, so please welcome the, to Artists' AEW Dynamite, the A that stands for Albatross, uh, Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Damn. Uh, next up, we will take the other half of the Lucha Brothers. Ray Phoenix. Ray Phoenix. I know I had him. There he is. Okay. Well, then, you took one of my high flyers. I'm going to have to take another high flyer. And since he's still on the board early, uh, I'm going to have to take former uh, TNT champion in Darby Allen. And next up, to further boost the AEW Rampage women's roster, Thunder Rosa. Mm-hmm. Didn't even have her on my list. Oh, man. Shameful. Yeah. Shameful. Because Thunder Rosa is fucking awesome. Um, well, I want AEW Dynamite to have some... Uh, you know what? I'm not going to say that because... No, never mind. If I if I go with that lead way, y'all are gonna fuck me. So never mind. I'm gonna just draft somebody else now because if I start with that original lead way, y'all are gonna fuck me on that pick. So uh, you know what? Let's go with I like him. I don't know why I like him better than his partner or his brother. I don't know if they're related, but uh I'm gonna draft Mark Quinn. Of private party. You take the next one, Shelby. All uh, right. Um. Ah, we'll go with uh, one half of FTR, Dax Harwood. Shit, he's on my list. All right. Um. I was going to say, like, oh, I want a great tag division, and then say Mark Quinn, but then I'll know they're going to take Isaiah Cassidy just to fuck with me. <laughs> uh, um, well, let's see, who'd y'all take so far? Y'all took Dax Hardwood, Ray Phoenix, and both the Bucks. Um, 
You know what? Just so I can see where y'all are going with this, I'm going to draft a woman. And I'm going to take the Brazilian hottie herself from Ty Conti. Can I do the next one, Nick? Yeah. Uh, we are going to take Cash Wheeler. Oh, there goes that. Yeah. I figured, I mean, top tag team in on, on, on Rampage, rather. Yeah. Well, I guess since I got Mark Quinn, I got to take Isaiah Cassidy. There you go. Nice. Uh, uh, let's say next up we will take. The chairman, Sean Spears. Fuck. I had him at my number 10. Well, you know what? Since he's uh, still on the board, and you took my uh, you took my number ten, which was going to be Sean Spears. Um, I will take the recently debuted Andrade. And we'll take the recently debuted Malachi Black. You can have him. Wasn't even on my list. Uh, I have Evil Uno. I can't have Evil Uno without Stu Grayson. Mm, and we will take Jungle Boy. Go ahead, take him. One so of passive the passive most like up and coming favorites, Rusty. Yeah, but. He's a great high flyer and everything, but I think this high flyer here that I'm about to draft AEW Dynamite is probably one of the most underrated high flyers in the history of wrestling. I don't think he's ever had his chance to really shine. And on AE, on artists' AEW Dynamite, which the A stands for Applesauce, um, he's going to get his chance to shine this time. And that, we draft Jack Evans. Mm. You want this one shovel? Um, sure. Shelby's like, hold on, I'm doing my Sudoku. <laughs> hold on. <laughs> no, I was just looking at names and not sure if you want me to go with the next one or just pick one, but I'm just picking one that I don't okay. even think is on this list. Uh, I'm going with the bunny, which is probably an odd pick for me, but I'm going it's with the, it. She is in the alternate list, but I like that she worked her way back up there because she'll work well with. Rosa and Baker. And I also Stat just Man. really liked Allie and TNA. That was like the only thing yeah. I found interesting about Impact for a long time. Um, my next draft pick is uh, somebody who I think once he ditches his fucking partner, I think could be a big star by himself. Um, and I'm gonna give him a mic every fucking week, and he can say whatever he wants. And that is Max Max Caster. Oh, that's the rapper guy, right? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck jackass. Um, oh, did you add Max Caster? At number 35. With our next pick, AEW Rampage, to further bolster the women's division, takes that bitch, Jade Cargill. Well, y'all are getting yourself a pretty nice women's division over there, but, you know, you can't have the AEW women's division without the originator of the AEW women's division. So, Artist's AEW Dynamite takes Rio. And that bitch will be there every week. <laughs> um, AEW Rampage's next pick is going to be the son of the legendary Brian Pillman, Brian Pillman Jr. Didn't even have him. And like I said, even though y'all took two tag teams from me, one I really wanted, one one I just kind of threw in there. Um, although I do want to make Jack Evans a single star, 
but you got to learn to crawl before you can walk. I got to take his partner with me, and that's Angelico. Holy shit, he's still on the board. We take Darby Allen. Oh, yeah, no, he's I not. Got him. 25 oh. still on the board, though. Damn. All right, I feel well. like 25 is one that uh, Will would have. Will. Yeah, no. We need to take number 25. All right, well, number 25 Absolutely. is on our list that we're taking is Ricky Starks. Absolute mm. Ricky Starks. That's, That's funny. Right. That's funny that you're taking Ricky Damn. Starks because my next pick is actually somebody else who wants to fuck the world, and that is Brian Cage. Not anymore. You know what the fuck I mean. Shut up. <laughs> Our <laughs> next up. Somebody else pick? did. Our next pick. The Bastard. Pac. He was on mine. 27. Well, Our 27 was real, so fuck you. Well, for my number, uh, I, don't know, I don't know what pick this is because y'all made me start drafting out of order. Y'all really fucked me Yeah, we did that like shortly after. I mean, once I went with Tully Blanchard, it just went all over. Yeah. <laughs> I had like a nice little order and everything. And I had like 30 men picked out. Then I had my eight women to the side. And y'all just said, fuck yeah, that. Yeah, see, I did that too. And yeah. then I just said, fuck that. And now my pen has died. So I don't uh, have. Um, right. Yeah, I forgot to I forgot to write y'all's down. Oh, hey, I found something. Here. So the next pick for AEW Dynamite, he's an oldie, but a goodie. We take the natural nightmare, Dustin Rhodes. Mmm, shit, I forgot about him. And we're gonna paint his ass black, and we're gonna is, call him uh, again. No. So is uh, you're not gonna call him seven? <laughs> That's a good point, actually. <laughs> no, Black Lane. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Yeah, so my name's Seven now. <laughs> my name's Seven. My new name's Seven, by the way. <laughs> but yeah, so Shelby is number thirteen available. Yes. Do you want to do it? You do it. Our next pick is John Moxley. Hmm. Um, that didn't really screw me up. I was just trying to think of where to go next. You know what? Before y'all grab him, I have a feeling y'all might grab him. Oh, do I want him or him? You know what? I think y'all would grab him before him. So, you know what? Just to get, you know... MJF might get a little lonely, so I draft a word low. And now, hang on a minute here. You took Wardlow? Wardlow. Okay. Um, I'm just trying to see here how many picks there are left, because I think we're somewhere around pick 20, but I'm not sure. Did I miss anybody? Yeah, I should write these down. I think we're on. I think this is 20 for us. Let me write these down. Okay, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, Okay, let's go with... Oh, wait, though. One, two. Oh, shit. We have... How many women do we have right now? Four? Uh, oh... Uh, one five. We have five. We have the five funny two because we have Jade. And Asylum, how many are you supposed to have? Is it eight? Yeah, eight. 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 Okay. Because they so only had take... they only had twenty one women listed on their roster. We take Red Velvet. Okay. Um, my next pick. We'll take uh, Penelope Ford. Okay. Yeah, that doesn't fuck anything for us. Oh, okay, and that one's next. And then we need... Oh, okay, because that... Um... Eddie Kingston. Okay. Um...
I really made a mistake by not writing writing down who I'm doing. I started putting check marks and shit, thinking like, oh, that'll do it, but I really messed up. Shelby, are you keeping track of me too? Uh, yeah, in a way, I'm crossing. Well, I've been crossing them out. I just don't know if I got all of them. Okay. Yeah, so whatever I've crossed out, you have, but there might be more. Okay. So. For my next pick, um, just so I can buy a second, uh, QT Marshall. Um, our next pick. Uh, just a, I have, I have thirteen of your picks, by the way, Will. If you need them. Okay, hold on. Yeah. No, I think I got it now. Hold on. I just picked Jake Hager, by the way. Uh, Jake, Jake Hager? Hager is now on four. Okay. So after QT Marshall. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You call him Marshall? It's Marshall. Yeah, you never, you never heard where they were just like, uh, oh, QT yes. Marshall's in the ring, and then Excalibur's like, it's QT Marshall. Yeah, I know. I, I, I watch Dynamite every week, dude. Yeah. Uh, so just to be clear, I have eight picks left, right? Um. Eight. Yeah, it's, well, how do you count the women? Are the women separate, or is 30 the total roster? Oh, for my men, I have eight, and then I'm missing two women, so I have ten. Ten picks left. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, All right. Now we're I'm, missing now, two women. Now I'm on board. Okay. All right. I'm with <laughs> All right. So here. for my next pick, let me get a woman, and we'll take... We'll take Anna J. That makes it nine left. Hang on a minute. Uh, just trying to figure something out here. Because we have. We can take another guy. So while Nick figures shit out, um, I'm going to go with Adam Page because I believe he wasn't picked. Nope. He was on okay. my reserve, though. Perfect. Um, for the next pick for AEW Dynamite, that is, um, I want Powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, we're going to go with Lipa Bates at the second last pick for the women's division. Okay. Um, I think for my last women's pick, what the hell's left still for women? I think that's pretty much killed all the women we had written down. <laughs> Except for one. Okay. Number 26. Um, uh, oh, shit, yeah. Give me, uh, for women, give me, um, um, oh, shit. Huh? Oh, um, what's her name? Fucking... I took Red Velvet. Oh, fuck it, Brandy Rhodes. Fuck it, give me Brandy Rhodes. Okay, we'll complete the women's division with the Rebel. I almost wrote her down, but didn't. Kind of surprised. It's the women. We should have eight yeah. picks. Well, fun eight fact: limits. I found out while researching the roster, she is not only an on-screen talent; she's also the hair and makeup artist for AEW. Yeah, I knew that. I think we have seven left, Nick. Do we? Oh, wait, sorry. Yeah, maybe. No, no, I've been counting the women, too. So I think you're right. We do have eight picks left. My bad. My bad. Oh, no, I'm missing a woman. 
<laughs> this is the best put put together pod, podcast we've ever done. I know, right? <laughs> well, usually I write down your picks, and for some reason I didn't start doing that. Yeah. So, fuck it. Let's just start over. Let's go back. All right, pick number yeah. one. Okay, Kenny uh, Omega. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, for my next pick, let's go with um, Scorpio Sky. Shit, I didn't even have him written down. Yeah, no shit, eh? That's um, surprising, actually. That's really surprising. Uh, there's so many guys, though. It's like I said, yeah. there's so yeah. many guys. It's easy I to count When I counted like, the roster to figure out how many people oh. we're going to do, I counted 81. Holy fuck. That, did, did that even count guys like Cesar Bonani and J.D. Drake and Ryan Nemeth? No, I didn't count guys who appear on it. I count. Oh, I went God. to the Wikipedia and looked at the roster oh. there, and whoever was listed on that roster, that's who I counted. So that's why people yeah. like like See, Danny Jordan, weird. Danny Jordan from you know she's a woman wrestler. Danny Jordan, I didn't count. I like the drafter, but she doesn't count. Um, you know, shit like that. Yeah. Um. Let's. I'm gonna say our next pick will go with Chris Jericho. I was wondering how long it would take for y'all to draft him. <laughs> ah, he's not what he used to be. Nowhere near it. I, I wouldn't be booking him in, like, a full-time capacity. And for the next one, like I got to go. I got to go with sexy Chucky e. T, Chuck Taylor. <laughs> well, since we... Uh, Don't do it. Don't do it, We sister. go with... Trent? God damn it. Question mark. <laughs> Next pick. Matthew Hardy. Ooh. Uh, next pick. One that I didn't see on the list that we have, uh, Lance Archer. Oh yes, good call. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Forgot. Next pick for AEW Dynamite. Boom, boom. Paul Cabana. Santana. Uh, yeah. How many picks do I have left overall? Do y'all know? Fuck. I stopped counting. <laughs> well, hang on a minute here. I'm listing out all the guys we have. How many do y'all have left? Well, I'm not quite there yet. Give me a second here. Oh, I'm almost there. Come on. I'm almost well, there. I'm at, I got 28. 20. So you got 28. Yeah. So you're starting. 28, 29, 30. That's three yeah. left. So then I have two. So, I, okay. All right, I'm on board here. So I need one more woman and one more guy. Because I'm down a woman. Okay. Um, Y'all really screwed up my whole tag team thing. Yeah. So. Let's make this person a star. On AEW Dynamite. And for the last overall male pick. Sunny Kiss. The concrete rose. <clears throat> Nick? Um, 29? Ortiz. There we go. Ortiz. Ortiz, so you got... Okay, hold on. I'm looking at the women's roster real quick. Da -da 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 -da. Got her, got her. Uh, don't got her. Um, um, for the last women's pick, I choose... Uh, 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 um, uh, 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 Jamie Hader. Very good. Uh, do you Very have good. a picnic? No. Um, how do you feel? This is a little coaches or managers or whatever's talk. How do you feel about Christian Cage? Well. I mean, yeah, let's take him. All right, Christian Cage it is. 
Okay. So we stacked that roster. Oof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. Nick Jackson will be opening up the night, me. losing every night. Well, then your, your tag team division is going to suck then. What do you mean? We got FTR and fucking Santana Ortiz just put matches on with them every night. But you have the Bucks have... there too. Mm, the jobbers. Whatever. <laughs> I'm not doing we got this. Mox and Kingston. Yeah, true. All right, so for those of you following at home, this is Artists' AEW Dynamite. Let's Hopefully I got this right. So for women, we have Brandy Rhodes, Jamie Hayter, Ty Conti, Nyla Rose, Hikaru Shida, Anna J, Penelope Ford, and Rio. And for men, this is where it's going to get weird. <laughs> Kenny Omega, Orange Cassidy, Luchasaurus, Pentagon, Evil Uno, Nick Camarado, Mark Quinn, Isaiah Cassidy, Stu Grayson, Darby Allen, Jack Evans, Max Caster, and Helico, MJF, Brian Cage, Dustin Rhodes, QT Marshall, Andrade. I think I'm missing a pick. Jackie T. Yeah, but after after Andrade, I have Dax Hardwood, who I didn't get. Yeah, you didn't get him at all. Okay. Uh, Scorpio Scott. Did you get Brian Dax- Cage? I did get Brian Cage. Sexy Check. Powerhouse Hobbs. Wardlow. Mad Hardy. Colt Cabana. And Sonny Kiss. How many was that? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> read, your roster. read your roster. Go. All right. Okay. I can't really do it in women and men, but I could do it from beginning to end. I can, or can I you do it, Nick? Women. Okay. I got the women categorized, um, but I lose track with the men. Right. Uh, so for women, we've got Brett Baker, D M D. Uh, Chris Statlander, Jade Cargill, Thunder Rosa, Red Velvet, The Bunny, Leva Bates, and Rebel. And then for our men's division. Sorry, hang something on. Something I think got fucked up here. Jane Cargill. Okay, there we go. Okay, so for our men's division, we have Nick the Jobber Jackson, uh, Sammy Guevara, Adam Page. Miro, John Moxley, Cody, Jungle Boy, Eddie Kingston, Dax Harwood, Jake Hager, Jericho, Ray Phoenix, Ricky Starks, Pac, Ortiz, Cash Wheeler, Malachi Black, Santana, or Santana, or Santana, I guess, um, Trent, Lance Archer, Christian Cage, Brian Pillman Jr., Jr., and best wishes, Tully Blanchard. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong. uh, I don't know if I'm doing something wrong, but I'm only counting I have 25 guys. Really? Yeah, and we have 27. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so then just real quick. Here, hold on. Just to make it easier, then. Um, I, Just I'll add take, two more guys to your roster. I'll take Fuego del Sol, Kip Sabian, Luther, Serpentico, and um, uh, J- Jelly Nutella. Oh, fuck. <laughs> well, fuck. Jelly's off the board now, so what are we going to do? What are we going to uh, do? Shit. Christopher Daniels? Uh, no, he doesn't count. Kazarian? Yeah, he does. Uh, yeah, Daniels counts. No, Daniels isn't wrestling anymore. He's a backstage agent. I know, but it says on here he's listed. All right, Daniels, Kazarian, Ethan Page. There we go. All right, there we go. <laughs> this is what I mean by, like, we threw this episode together. 
We'll try and work a little bit harder on this next I know. Time. We did better on our other drafts where we yeah, had to the, write shit down. You remember? Yeah. I just completely fucking forgot to start writing shit down. I just started <laughs> checking them off. And That's funny. And you're like, oh, I'm going to pick my number 38. And I'm like, what? Well, huh? And then that <laughs> me off. <laughs> well, no, y'all really fucked me up with your first pick because y'all were like Nick Jackson. He was like 25 on my list because I was like, I ain't got to worry about fucking bucks. You know? Yeah. So then, like, y'all really fucked me up there because now I have to X that out and now I have to worry about my alternate. It was, it was a whole fucking ordeal in my brain. <laughs> it was fun. Brain cells but, were harmed during the Yeah, the recording animals of weren't that. harmed, but our brain cells were. <laughs> but uh, I think it's safe to say I got the better show. So. Yeah. You okay. don't have good enough jobbers, though. I got Luther and Serpentico. You don't have a job like Nick Dobber, Jobber Jackson. They're not jobbers, though. Oh, well, they are. Be, yeah, on your show there. Be, and just real be, quick, let's be, go over a couple names that didn't get picked. Um, Alan Angels, Alex Reynolds, um, Anthony Bowens didn't get picked. Anthony Oingo Bongo didn't get picked. Austin Gunn, mm-hmm. neither one of Bear Country got picked. Billy Gunn didn't get picked. The Blade. Yeah, and so the Blade didn't get picked. Brandon Cutler didn't get picked. Brock Anderson, I don't even know who that is. And he's oh, listed on... You don't know who Brock Anderson is? No. That's Arn Sun. That's Arn Sun. Oh, well, doesn't matter. You even been watching Dynamite? Doesn't matter. He didn't get picked. Shit. And he is, list- he is listed on the roster here. Uh, yeah. But Brody Lee Jr. did not get picked. So is Brody Lee, though. No, he didn't. <laughs> Yeah, he is. He's on there. Not on the roster I have. Oh, he's on the AEW roster on fucking their website. Oh, I was looking on Wikipedia, dude. Oh. Um. So, negative one was not picked. The butcher wasn't picked. Wait, wait, hold on. You were shitting on me for looking at Wikipedia earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch. Uh, um, the butcher wasn't picked. Chavo Guerrero wasn't picked. I oh, forgot about him, too. Colton Gunn wasn't picked. Dante Martin, Darius Martin weren't picked. Uh, the, was Griff Garrison picked? Did y'all pick him? No. No. No, okay. Griff Garrison Julie wasn't picked. Hart wasn't picked. Uh, John Silver wasn't picked. Lee Johnson wasn't picked. Mark Henry technically wasn't picked. Marco Stunt wasn't picked. Matt Seidel yeah. wasn't picked. Wait a minute, I thought I had Matt Seidel. Uh, oh, no, I didn't want him botching up his fucking shooting star press every week. That's why I didn't pick him. I mean, you could just tell him not to use the move. Yeah. Michael Nakazawa wasn't picked. Naka Naka to fuck off. <laughs> I love that. Naga, 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 zawa. I love that shit. Uh, Paul White wasn't picked. Uh, Preston Vance wasn't Insano. picked. Yeah, Captain, Captain Insano. Captain Insano. I thought about that, too. I was like, I think they're going to give me shit if I draft Captain Insano. So. Uh, probably I not. wanted to do joke. it. I wanted to draft Captain Insano and make best wishes Tully Blanchard as his manager. Oh, my God. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, Preston Vance wasn't uh, picked. Uh, um, uh, Sean Dean wasn't picked. Uh, Peter Avalon was picked. Oh, yeah. One of the biggest names on this roster was not picked, and that's Sting. Yeah, fuck Sting. Yeah. It's really sad females, that he is one of the biggest names on the AEW roster. Uh, and for females, not a lot were picked because there was only like 21, but Abaden didn't get picked. Big Swole wasn't picked. Emmy Sakura wasn't picked. Uh, Layla Hirsch wasn't picked. And yeah, that was would have been next. Serena Deeb. I almost went with Serena Deeb. Oh, but shit. She was not picked. And Yuki Sakazaka was not picked. Yuki Sakazaka is actually all right. I was kind of impressed with her the last time I saw her stuff. Yeah, I mean, um, I just... I uh, I was gonna base my whole division on um, Statlander, Baker, Sheeta, and Rose. Those were gonna be like my my centerpieces, and then everybody else would kind of like be like side dishes, you know. But y'all kind of fucked that up right off the bat. I, I 
I, I thought y'all were going to take Baker first. That's why I wrote her second on mine. I was like, we're going to take Baker first. So just write her second just in case. And I was like, I'll take Statlander first because I like Statlander better. Nope. See, and I thought mm-hmm. my thinking was he's definitely going to take Statlander first because he likes Statlander better. So I'm putting Statlander ahead of Britt Baker. Honestly, to be honest with you, Nick made most of this list because I did not know their roster well enough to like put too much thought into this stuff. He just he knew a lot more about them. I did I did put Nick Jackson on though, and I was very adamant that he was number one. <laughs> the only ones I really felt like screwed on, I felt I felt screwed with Trent, the Bucks, Pack. I had him as twenty seven, so it wasn't like ah, god damn it. Um, Bray Phoenix a little bit because I had him at fourteen. And I think that's it. Everybody else, like FTR, I was just like, eh, I kind of want them, but like if I lose them, I'm not too upset. Mm. But everybody else, you know, I was like, all right. Like I'm surprised MJF didn't go in the in the top ten. Yeah. Same he with I, you know, when it comes to MJF, I, I'm not that big on him. I wrote down, like, to the side. These were people who weren't numbered or anything. I wrote down Darby Allen, MJF, Adam Page, Andrade, and Cody, thinking those guys are going to go quick, but I'll write them down just in case. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. But I got, I got three of the five that I wrote down. Y'all took Adam Page and Cody. And I got all the women I wanted except for Baker and Stanley. Everybody else I wrote down, I got. Mm. I didn't think I'd get Rio. Or Ty Conti. I figured Ty Conti was on your radar, too. That's why I went ahead and took Sheeta first, because mm-hmm. I was like, I'm pretty sure they're going to take Sheeta next if I don't say anything. Cause <laughs> yeah, I thought Sheeta we were doing would it. have been next. I thought we were doing the 30 men first, then the, the eight women, but Nick was just like, number three oh. is Rick Baker, or, I'm like, or Statlander. I was like, oh, okay, we're not doing that? Okay, all right, well. Yeah, no, our, our list was just made straight. Uh, we should have probably did that. Didn't even think of that. You no. Know? So, all right. Well, that was our AEW draft, guys. Uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. That would be what our AEW shows would look like in a fantasy world where they would have separate uh, rosters for their show, kind of like Raw and SmackDown and, I guess, NXT. Uh, so, join us next week where we draft AEW Dark and Dark Elevation. Yeah. Because um, uh-huh. you're going to hear a bunch of names <laughs> if you don't know. Not really. We're going to have to review SummerSlam and uh, TakeOver. The last possibly Man. good takeover will wait. Ever wait, hold on. Are we doing SummerSlam and takeover? Yeah. Oh, that added a lot more wrestling. Yeah, that is so oh, much. Fuck. That is so much. Why are you going to deprive our listeners of our thoughts and views on these two amazing shows that we're going to have to sit through? That's because gonna they're going like to be the most pre- fucking wrestling. These shows are going to be predictable as all hell. Not that not that I don't want to watch NXT TakeOver, but I don't want to have, like, just watch SummerSlam and been like, oh. I might save SummerSlam for Monday and watch SummerSlam after TakeOver, just so I'm not disappointed heading into TakeOver. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I don't know. I'll figure that out later. Yeah. Yeah, we'll figure it out later. That's a fact. Speaking of fact, um, Nick has our wrestling fact of the week, which we usually go into it blind. So, uh, Nick, what's the uh, fact of the week? So, our fact of the week today, we go back to WrestleMania 19. Now, the reason we go back to WrestleMania 19 is because WrestleMania 19 was the first WrestleMania in history to feature not one, but two wrestlers using their real given names in the main event. Brock Lesnar and Kurt Angle both used their real given names in their title match at WrestleMania 19, marking the first time in WrestleMania history that two wrestlers used their given names going in as competitors to the main event. Wait, wait, wait. wait. You're, so... telling, you're, you're telling me that Hulk Hogan is not his real name? I could have swore Paul Orndorff and Hulk Hogan. That's like, that's so bizarre considering the fact that, like, if Crockett or WCW won the fucking wrestling war and put WWE out of business, like, 
you know, they they used real names for pretty much everybody, like more so than um, the WWF. Anyways, I mean, they didn't have any like mm-hmm. Hulk Hogan's. You know what I mean? Like well, it's they did just have so bizarre. Hogan. Yeah, well, like they got him eventually, but I think you know what I'm saying. They didn't have a marquee star. <laughs> well, they kind of did in Ric Flair. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Good old American Ric Flair. Hey, speaking of American. American. Wow. Uh, <laughs> speaking of American, we got to talk about one of our sponsors here. And that is uh, MoviesRUSA.net. That is the letter R. Right there, right smack dab in the middle. Movies are USA.net. And much like hardtofindtv.com and their sister site, fanmadedvd.com, movies are USA.net is a website where you can go, go over and find some hard to find films or hard to find, or not even hard to find. It's stuff that is readily available in digital media. But if you just want some physical media, because, you know, physical media is dying. Think about the last time you went and saw that sad, pathetic DVD section at your local Walmart. And how voiceful it used to be and everything. Well, MoviesRUSA.net is keeping that dream alive where you can have a physical copy of some of your favorite Netflix films, Netflix series, Amazon Prime series, so forth. And if you head on over there and find a title that you like, like recently they just released, uh, you guys like Robot Chicken? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They released all 10 seasons plus the specials of Robot Chicken on a two disc blu-ray set and i know right and if you go over (laughs) there and use the podcast checkout code three-way that's the word three not the number if you use the checkout code three-way you'll get that whole set 10 seasons of robot chicken plus the specials that they've done for only 20 bucks wow usually 40 bucks but with our checkout code you're going to save 50 percent That's more than our other two sponsors combined. Not that we don't love our other two sponsors, but that's more than our other two sponsors combined. You'll save 50%, five, zero. You find another podcast out there who's going to give you a deal like that. Okay? Hey, you're not going to be able to go to Walmart and say three-way dance to the cashier and get a discount, right? Exactly. Yeah. You know, you might get a restraining order, but uh, you won't get a discount, you know? So... Head on over to MoviesRUSA.net. Their link is in the description of this podcast. Find something that you want to watch tonight and use our checkout code and save 50% on it. So let's head into our sports list of the week that, again, I'm not prepared for. Um, I got to pull that up here. But uh, let me see here. There we go. That is the wrong one. (laughs) There it is. All right, so the sports that listed a week this week is 10 10 superstars not taken seriously because of their gimmick. Okay. All right. Okay. Coming in at number 10 is everybody's favorite, the Disco Inferno. Gee, I wonder why. I mean, yeah. (laughs) Disco Inferno was, was awesome, though, man. Yeah. 20 years after Disco had faded out and they expect Glenn Gilbretti to go out and Disco dance when it was not relevant by any means. But it was Studio 54. He got good Studio deals. 54 almost closed was was almost closed by that point. He might have got good heel heat, but was it more go away heat? Hey, it's heat heat. Mm. <sighs> You know, Disco mm. Inferno is fucking the dopest shit here, man. I mean, I don't think Disco Inferno can do any wrong. Um, but he also has a mind for the business and has trained several of today's uh, current crop, including Karrion Cross. Strike that. He can do some wrong. He trained um, Karrion Cross. That's what it says here. Oh, dear. What? So I take that back. Oh, dear. He can do some wrong. He gave us fucking Karrion Cross. Um, <sighs> Coming in at number nine, uh, Santino Morella. Oh, I love Santino. I wish fucking Jim Cornette would have slapped him into the next fucking lifetime, though. <laughs> what a joke that guy became. Like, what a fucking dummy. <laughs> I'm going to go into the women's Royal Rumble or, or Royal Rumble. Battle Royal at WrestleMania and fucking win it. 
<laughs> what a stupid. He didn't win it. His 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 sister did. <laughs> All right. His sister Santina did. Yeah. Well, what's your yeah. problem with Santina? Nothing. <laughs> just your Shelby's just like I'm not going. I'm not going. I'm not doing this. <laughs> not too <laughs> <much>. table flips. <laughs> <laughs> but you have to admit, but again, I mean, again, this is another one you can't say was taken seriously because at one moment he was over, man. Like he, he, well, he was in world title matches. Was, oh, I'm sorry, yeah, he, was in, the, he was in world title match. <laughs> he only had one. <laughs> yeah. You yeah, know? and the only reason why was because the pop at the Royal Rumble. No, that's not entirely true. It, uh, I read that it was also like a uh, thank you for all the work that you've been doing lately. Because he was also the United States champion when he entered that match. And um, he was getting over. Plus, he was doing, you know, a lot of work and everything. So, I also heard it was kind of like, okay, here's a thank you. So, they threw him in the chamber because somebody was out. I forgot who it was, though. Oh, okay. I mean, um, I thought he was cool when he came in and challenged it was Umaga, right? Yeah, he beat Umaga for yeah, the Intercontinental. Umaga. 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 <laughs> um, I thought that was cool, but, like, I don't know. They just turned him into a joke, and then a bigger joke, and then a bigger joke, and then all he was And then he was having act. tea parties with Vladimir Ka- Kozlov. Him doing the honky-tonk man Intercontinental title thing could have been <laughs> fucking great, too. The like, it could have been better man. than that. Yeah. The honky tonk man. The honky tonk man had the intercontinental championship for this very day. For 62 weeks. Santino Morella. Santino Morella has held it for 62 weeks at one day. <laughs> uh, all right. And coming in at number eight is the Repo Man. Ah, uh, you know what? I just realized the other day I've been watching matches from the guy who played the repo man what because he was also was that i want to know what matches you were watching with him so he was also in demolition correct oh my god <laughs> Fuck. Duh. we're moving on so i don't even want to hear i, I don't know no no nope, don't want to hear the rest of the story nope I... the fact that you said oh he was in demolition we're done not, I wasn't going to talk about demolition, but okay. Oh, okay. Go ahead then. Go ahead. Then. So he was Crusher Darso in uh, Mid South and Jim Crockett, and he was uh, he teamed up with uh, Nikolai Volkov in Mid South, and he teamed up with um, Ivan Koloff and Nikita Koloff in Crockett as the uh, Russians, which mm-hmm. I didn't know until I started watching recently. It was cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought you were going somewhere else with this. I, oh, I just found out he was in Demolition. I was like, that's it. We're done here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't we, are, we are moving on. All right. Coming in at number seven is... Oh, God. This fucking no-showing bald bastard. Um, Number seven, <laughs> Eugene. <laughs> I, I got us. Okay, what's the name of the list again? Eugene. No, what's the name of the list? Oh, uh, 10 superstars not taken seriously because of their gimmick. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, he was another one that got really over for a time. But, yeah, he, and he, I, I think he was better in ring than Santino was personally. Well, like, I, I always heard the legend of Nick Dinsmore. This is, like, when I first got the internet and shit like that, like, before he mm-hmm. debuted, a couple of years before he debuted. I always heard the legend of Nick Densmore and how great he was and everything like that. And then he debuted as Eugene. I'm like, all right, well, this is different. Yeah. You know? And for, you know, before he was a fucking no-showing bald bastard, um, <laughs> you know, I was a Eugene fan. Yeah, yeah. You know, but... I mean, I, I thought he talented wrestler. I think the gimmick could have used some work, but yeah, hundred percent. Like maybe, maybe Eugene is given some like alcohol by Uncle Eric, and then all of a sudden he's not retarded anymore. Yeah. <laughs> hey, kids, he drink up. Fastest. You know? I, <sighs> I would have made it. I don't know. Do you need something to explain it. 
Or oh, gets kicked in the head by a mule. I don't know. Something. Or he's always drunk. That's it. And he just gets sober. Kind of like Yeah. Pest. Yeah. Festus was always on drugs, and <laughs> CM Punk cured him, and now he's like, oh, shit, I'm Doc Gallows now. Okay. Yeah. Now he's not. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Your family's been keeping his whole off for years. One, That's why I, you act like this. This one I 1,000% disagree with. Number six, that 70s guy, Mike Awesome. This list can go to hell. Uh-huh. I don't I know much about Mike Awesome guy. in this era. Do what? I don't know much about Mike Awesome during that 70s guy era. It was a well-placed gimmick for somebody that was way too talented to have it. I know, but it was so good, too. And then he had Crowbar as that 70s guy Crowbar as his partner. That was awesome. Oh, fuck. I loved it. Loved every second of it. Coming in at number five. Oh, I want to hear Shelby's reaction to this one. <laughs> Our truth Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, our truth, WWE Ron Killings, fucking sucks. But like, except for I mean, when he did the little Jimmy stuff, if he could have made it not hokey, that would have got over really well, I think. But I mean, Ron the Truth Killings, that's a totally different person, in my opinion. Uh, truth could be his royal. Oh wait a minute. Uh, if Vince McMahon was a medieval king, Truth could be his royal jester. Is what it says. Here. Mm-hmm. Uh, like at this point, poor Truth will get the legacy wing of the Hall of Fame just to keep in par with everything else. No, I think he'll get the Coco Beware spot where people will be like, oh, they're putting him in? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that too. You know. Coming in at number four. Let me see which one they're talking about first before I say this one. Okay. Doink the Clown, played by Matt Bourne. Hmm. I mean, he was pretty much... He was the original, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, as an evil Joker meets Krusty the Clown type of clown. It's too bad that couldn't have lasted longer. I heard he was a tough son of a bitch, too. Yeah, the only thing that could take him down were drugs. <laughs> <laughs> too soon? Wow. I mean, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. Like a long while? I was talking about uh, Sonny Bono with my mom uh, and um, I told her I was like you know I read an interview about Sonny Bono he said he only said one thing in his life that he regretted you know what it was and she was like what I was like hey let's go skiing <laughs> I just hear the, I hear the disappointment coming from Nick <laughs> yeah pretty much eh? <laughs> Um, all right. Coming in at number 10. <laughs> hey, let's go skiing. Um, coming in at number three, Screaming Norman Smiley. Screaming? Huh? Screaming. <laughs> oh, I've seen a little bit of Norman Smiley. I don't remember Screaming Norman Smiley. You don't remember Screaming Norman Smiley? No. Oh, my God. Dude. He screamed? Did he actually do this? Like, I remember in TNA, he was always so quiet in TNA. He never, like, did a promo or anything. Oh, my God. Shelby, what am I going to do with you? I told you. I started watching wrestling in 2003. And I haven't made it to WCW in the late 90s yet. Oh, my God. Who said anything about WCW in the late 90s? I was just guessing. But you're right. It's WCW. In the late 90s. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a very WCW in the late 90s thing. Oh, the Screaming Norman was fucking fantastic. Did he actually scream his promos? No, he didn't scream them, but his whole thing was like when he got... Because his whole thing was he was just Norman Smiley. He was Magic Man Norman Smiley for a while. Jesus and then, Christ, how many gimmicks did he have? Not a lot, believe it or not. Really? Okay. Yeah, he was just... Well, he was just... Uh, well, he went by Norman Smiley, but he always had magic on his tights. So if he did oh. a little piece at that time, it, it was Magic Man Norman Smiley. So then um, when the hardcore division came up, somehow Norman Smiley became like the fucking centerpiece of that division. Yeah. So his thing was like when he got like hit with like a chair or a trash can or something like that, he would do the, like this loud pitch scream. Oh, OK. So that's how he became screaming Norman and shit like that. Yeah, that's amazing. I do yeah. want to check out some of the WCW hardcore title. Matches. I love the WCW. I hardcore saw movie. one 
with Norman Smiley defending against against I guess against somebody, and it was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, all those matches are what the fuck, but they're a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, I think, believe it or not, I think Nick's gonna have something to say about this one. Maybe, maybe you too, Shelby. But number two, the Honky Tonk Man. Oh, okay. The crowd goes wild. All right. What's the name of this list again? <laughs> Ten superstars who are not taken seriously because of their gimmick. I think he was taken seriously, um, no? I think he was taken seriously, too. I have a hard time with that because, and especially, like, if they were in, like, Nashville or if they were in, like, a big yeah. music city, yeah. they shit all, holy, they could have, oh, they shit all over them. I don't yeah. think it, it, for what that character was, I think it actually did better than what, by all rights, it should have, considering the other cartoon gimmicks that didn't get over uh, at the yeah. time. Yeah. I don't think that's very accurate with Honky Talk Man. Yeah. Any guesses as to what number one could be? Hmm. Crime time. Crime time? No. Shelby? Uh... Come on, they haven't gone good. for like they haven't done like uh the task master master or like you know what? I'm gonna say the taskmaster. Number one the hurricane. Really? What? Yeah. What? Three count would have been more of that wow. Huh. Hmm. Uh, while he was never going to get a world title, some of the best moments of his early aughts involved Hurricane. His story with The Rock in particular was absolute gold. Oh, The Rock in his shit was like just phenomenal. It was so good. It was honestly, I think it was the best stuff that Gregory Helms has ever done. Yeah, like not, I. Not I, to say that he's bad or anything, but I think just having that rub with The Rock was always really good for him. To this day, surprising. I think the first uh, Elimination Chamber shouldn't have had um, uh, Jericho and uh, Booker T. And I think those two spots should have been filled by Jeff Hardy and the Hurricane. Yeah. Hmm. At the time, they would have been more appropriate for that match. I think. Yeah. All right. So that was the Sportster List of the Week. Uh, so that leads us to our questions, and we have some fresh faces in there that I didn't have to threaten anybody or anything. Uh, so let me pull those up. The we first have a one very here, famous face, too. Do what? We have a very famous face. We do? Yeah. It's a joke, but... Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so the first ones here was actually left on a separate video, so let me go ahead and do those here. These come from Josh A., and he has two questions here, and that is, what is all y'all's favorite action movie? Good fellas. Okay. Shall hmm. we? I'm bad at these. Um, I'll go with Watchmen. Really? Not Smokey and the Bandit? Nah, I count that more as a comedy. Mm. Yeah. Um... Action movie? I'm not real big on action movies, but if I had to pick one, um, uh, probably. You know what? Sorry, sorry, Josh. Too many of the name. Huh. Um, and the second one is which rest? I thought this was a good question. Which wrestler is your favorite actor? Ah. Purely for the condemned Stone Cold Steve Austin. I was talking mm -hmm. about that movie today with my coworker. I loved that movie when I was a kid. I haven't watched it in a long time. I, now, are we talking because there's, there's a different way you can look at this question. Wrestlers are actors at the end. Oh, of the my day, God. Right? He doesn't mean it that way. Okay, well, then... Uh, Batista. Really? Yeah. Didn't see that one coming. I do like Steve Austin in The Condemned. 
Mm-hmm. That is a good. That's a fucking badass movie, even without Steve Austin. Yeah, it is. If you would have made the yeah. same movie without Steve Austin in the lead, that still would have been wow. a fucking badass movie. It's basically a more brutal Hunger Games, really. Well, which I think the Hunger Games is a great concept, but I'm I'm afraid to ask this. But have you ever seen Battle the Japanese Royal. movie Battle Royal? Yes, I have. Oh, that okay. movie is oh. phenomenal. I forgot about that one though. All right, just want to make sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but favorite res- I mean, I, I grew up in the time of Paul Hogan, so I, I guess I'd have to say Hogan because I mean, come on, Suburban Commando, Mr. Man, Mr. Nanny, No Holds Barred, Three Ninjas, High Noon at Mega Mountain. What is your obsession with this fucking movie? I don't get it. I don't get it. I knew that Mega Mountain was the shit. Man, I, I only picked it. the good Hulk Hogan movies. There weren't any good Hulk Hogan movies yeah, there except weren't. for no Rocky Holds Barred, Mr. Nanny, Thunder Lips. Oh my god, I, we're not doing this. Muppets from Space. That's not really a Hulk Hogan movie, though. That's a movie with a Hulk Hogan cameo. That's the same Gremlins so 2 Hulk Hogan, Hogan movie. movie. He's in Gremlins 2? Yeah. Oh. Shit. <laughs> All right. Well, next, next one here comes from Andrew. Good old Andrew. And that is, if The Rock runs for President of the United States, do you think he has a chance of winning? Yes. Great question to ask two Canadians. Yes, I do. I don't know a whole lot about Canadian or Canadian. I don't know a whole lot about Canadian politics either, to be honest with you. But I don't know a whole lot about American politics. But uh, I just it's a popularity contest. Any any vote like that is. And, and I mean, at this point in his life, who's more popular than The Rock right now that's actually going to run? With the right running mate. And the right team behind him, I think he could be president. Do I think he would be successful in a run? No. Yeah, that's that's the real question there, right? I still think Jesse Ventura should be president. Oh, God, no. Please, no. Fuck. You don't even fucking live here. I know, but I'm close enough that I'll have to deal with it. I'm close enough to where I have to deal with it. <laughs> People yelling at you over the river. Hey! Hey! <laughs> just, just knowing would be enough for me to be like, oh my god, the world is ending. <laughs> um, I mean, hey, if Trump can win it, then I guess The Rock can win it. But I don't know. I thought Kanye stood a chance when he said he was running. So, <laughs> oh, dear God, well, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> All right. Uh, Andrew asks, best souvenir you ever bought at a live event. Uh, my Matt Hardy version one necklace. Um, <sighs> um, come on, sound it out. Tuh, uh, nuh. Come on. <laughs> Today, Junior. Probably my Ziggler. It's not showing off if you back it up, shirt. Mm. Or else my ticket stub from the first draw I went to. Shelby? I already said title belt. Oh, I didn't hear you say it. I'm yeah, sorry. I said it the same time you were talking, so that's probably All why. Right. Well, and maybe you shut the fuck up and let me talk. Um, rude. <laughs> speaking of rude, uh, oh, who has the most memorable music in the last two years? No Bobby Rude, no Nakamura. I think we all have the same answer on this. Roman. Roman Reigns. Hmm. No. Really? Yeah, I was actually going to say Undisputed Era, and that might just be because I'm a huge Undisputed Era fan. But but that's not in the me, last two years. Well, neither is Bobby Roode or Nakamura. Oh, I see why he put that. I thought he put. <laughs> okay. uh, I guess Reigns. I guess. Who had the most memorable music in the last two years? Okay, no Bobby still... Roode or Nagamore. Okay, they're still playing fucking Undisputed Era's theme. Bobby Roode doesn't even get a theme anymore, and I'm pretty sure, well, Nakamura, I guess they changed recently back to it. That was what I was thinking. The question is, you fucking fuck. You know, I don't like your attitude. That's Okay. <laughs> 
Oh, and these next questions Shelby's going to love because they all come from Stug138. Oh, my God. Yeah, I saw what he did this week. <laughs> he reverted back, so I'm not going to make any mention of it again. Three things you love about WWE right now. The only thing I love about WWE right now is heel Roman. There is nothing else I can actually say I love. Uh, Charlotte's right boob, Charlotte's left boob, Charlotte's ass. <laughs> Uh, honestly, I wouldn't say love, but uh, Roman, the booking of Lashley, and uh, the booking of Walter as well. How can you love the booking of Walter when they... Never mind. I'm not even... All right. <laughs> Stug ass, three things you hate about WWE right now. Oh, boy. <laughs> Eva Marie. <laughs> Lily. Lily. Okay. And Reggie. What? I'm starting to like Reggie. I am so sick yeah, fuck, of Re- fuck I am, Reggie. I'm just sick of it. Fuck I Reggie. like the whole 24 7 thing he's doing where like he goes to a park. He's like, oh, I just like fresh air. And I'm always aware of my surroundings. And he just backflips out the way. And there's a Kira and R Truth there. Like, son of a bitch. You know? <laughs> I like that. Um, I just. No. No. Sorry. Three things I hate about WWE right now. Uh, oh, my God. Um, there's a black champion. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> and that was the end of the three-way dance podcast. <laughs> Forever. We lost all our sponsors. <laughs> We're like, what? <laughs> No, no, no. We're all inclusive here at the Three Way Dance Wrestling Podcast. Whether all inclusive and all included. Yep. Uh, but three things I hate: um, Charlotte not being naked every week. Um, no Lacey Evans. No Velveteen Dream. Fair enough. Shelby. Uh, we'll go Kieran Cross's latest booking where he lost Jeff Hardy. Uh, that was awesome. Uh, That's one thing I love about fucking, WWE. Uh, um, I'll take back Charlotte's right boob. No, I'll take back Charlotte's left boob and put in carrying Cross. <laughs> Alexa Bliss's fucking gimmick right now. Mm-hmm. And which side talking, note? Just... What? Side Sorry. note, wasn't the whole idea of Alexa Bliss's gimmick was because the fiend is there? The fiend's gone now. Can we just have the goddess back now? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I agree. I agree. Um, right. They said anything in WWE, so I guess I'll put on uh, some of the uh, releases they've had this year. Yeah. yeah. That's Not all, but some. That kind of relates to mine. I said no bells. I team. guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Stug138 asks, top three <laughs> uh, WWF <laughs> slash WWE finishing moves of all time. Um, clothesline from hell, the world's strongest slam, and uh, the strongest slam. Are you shit? Do you realize there's other finishing moves, right? <laughs> yeah, and uh, the, the flying elbow. Mm. Ooh, yeah. Um, I gotta go, Mark Marrow's TKO. Um, Trouble in Paradise. And, uh, RKO. Hmm. I'll go with the FU, uh, not the AA. That is just a fucking horrid name for that, but the FU, um, the F5, because that's just a fucking crazy move for Lesnar to pull off to anybody. And um, Stunner. I was really hoping that the third one you picked started with an F as well. <laughs> well the FU, the F5, and the Fisherman Suplex. So like, what? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Stug138 asks, 
list top five weirdest celebrity appearances in the WWF slash WWE history. <laughs> weirdest what appearances? Sorry, you're breaking celebrity. up. Celebrity. Celebrity. Oh, appearances. Okay. Uh, this, what? A. You're really breaking up. Yeah. Hold on a second. There it is better. I thought it was me that was having problems. <laughs> no, yeah. I care people locker. Domo Arigato? <laughs> can't. You're breaking up <laughs> so bad. We still can't understand you. I heard. <laughs> oh, I think he said talk amongst yourselves at one point. So, Nick. Oh, well, so in terms of the top five, my top five for the five weirdest celebrity appearances, I've got Buzz Aldrin, Reverend Al Sharpton, Jerry Springer, any of the times he was on, uh, LeVar Ball, and Pete Rose in 2010. Oh, God, was LeVar Ball the one where he started, like, saying, kick that N-word's ass or whatever? Was yes. that his son or was that his? That was his son. Jesus Christ, that was insane. <laughs> I can't believe that they this is actually so like weird, someone man. got away with that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's been like well, so many like weird, especially if you go back to like the um the guest the, host uh, era. Yeah, the guest host era. Like there's so many like weird like John Stewart getting involved in a match, like just fucking weird shit, right? Like well, I don't know. Seth Green wrestling a match. Yeah. Oh, Seth Devin Green was summer. awesome. You like Seth Green? Yes. <laughs> my top five. So my five weirdest celebrity appearances, just to bring you up to speed there. because you. Were... I heard them. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. well, okay, since y'all are hearing me now, let me try again here. Yeah. I said Chris Angel, Pee Wee Herman, even though people love it, Bob Barker. I don't even remember who I said now. <laughs> I know those three for sure. Pee Wee Herman, Bob Barker, Chris Angel. You know, it, it was really weird, but Regis Feldman, I always thought was really weird at WrestleMania 7. Mm. Yeah. And, um... I would say Ray Combs at WrestleMania 8, but I, I fucking love Ray Combs too much. Um, the Three Stooges. I was going to say that they were actually number six for me, like if I hadn't have put any others, because that one was really fucking weird too. Because you would have thought that the Three Stooges would have fit in with what they yep. were going for, but it just didn't work. No. No. Shelby? Um, I don't know if I can come up with five, but um, a lot of the ones you guys said, for sure. Um, Snooky as well. And I think, did they have um, all... Didn't they have the other guys from... Uh, what's the fucking show they were in? <laughs> Jersey Shore. No, they had no, random T people. No, TNA Jersey. had everybody from fucking Jersey Shore except for Snooky. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, Anyways. yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, I love the Muppets. Snooky but... went to WWE. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, I know, yeah, and some of those guest spots you wouldn't think would work, and they did, like the Muppets. I was like, oh, God, this is going to be awful, but that actually ended up being pretty good. Well, well, see, I was going to go the opposite. I like the Muppets. I just don't like the idea of the Muppets being there, interacting with superstars and, and wrestlers that I'm supposed to take seriously. Uh, so, unfortunately... Speaker is Seamus' long-lost cousin. <laughs> <laughs> me, 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 me. 
Me, 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 me. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't make the family reunion this year. <laughs> me, 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 me. Yes, um, give, give it whoever my love. Me, 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 me. All right. Um, movie fan, uh, 65738, a.k.a. Jason. He has, what was The Rock's best match? Versus Hogan. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's had lots of good matches, but best, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he also tacked on, did he win? Uh, yeah, The Rock, the Rock won that one. <laughs> um, Andrew came back with another one here, and that was, how about that Christian win? You think he will eventually get the AEW strap and get the most diverse title resume of any single superstar ever? No. He wouldn't have the most diverse, would he? No. AEW, technically ECW, WWE World Heavyweight, and NWA. Impact. Yeah, but, I mean, Omega, how many... Well, he didn't hold the Impact one, though. He only had the... Well, now he does. Um, yeah. But how many has Omega had? Omega would have New Japan, AAA, AEW. Impact. Impact. Is that it? Yep. Oh, okay. Because I, I don't think he was ever... You know, no, he was never Ring of Honor world champ. No, that's true, I guess. Eh? Um, um, but no, I don't think I don't think they should put the belt on him either. I no, no, the, the, no. The next person that's getting the AEW world title is going to be Orange Cassidy. <laughs> he's not going to drop it to Orange Cassidy. Jungle Boy is getting it before Cassidy is. Yeah. Oh, Cassidy, freshly squeezed. If they were going to go with Cassidy, it would have already happened. They're not going with Cassidy. Kenny Omega's ego is way No, because if they should have went with anybody who's been world champion, I'm sorry, but I think MJF should have been world champion. I think he should have been the one to dethrone Moxley. Mm, I didn't no, see, actually, no. Well, so um, your opinion is wrong. <laughs> at this point, if like I would, I would say Hangman should dethrone, dethrone Omega, but MJF should dethrone Hangman right away after. Yes. Yeah, don't give uh, don't right give Hangman away too long, Rain. Give who a long Hangman? Run? Don't, don't give, give Hangman, Hangman a long, a long run. run. Oh, okay. Not yet, like, at least. Have Hangman as a transition to MJF from Omega. Yeah. And then build Hangman back up is the way I would do it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next question comes from Diana here. And Diana asks, what are you guys' favorite WWE match of all time? So only WWE. Mm. Steamboat Savage Mania 3. Um, I think I think I'd have to. It's a tie between Taker and Michaels at WrestleMania 25, or Michaels and Hogan at SummerSlam 05. <laughs> the greatest selling ever. I know. Now, when I say this next one, I don't want you to be like, "Oh, was that a this?" Ben versus Kurt Angle WrestleMania 17. Hmm. Okay. I thought you said the Royal Rumble <laughs> one was like your favorite. Uh, I don't remember. I mean, to be honest, like when we did that list, like there's a lot of those matches that could slide in and out. Just depends on the day. I was mm-hmm. even thinking the um, the Michaels Benjamin match from Raw that one time with the super kick. Like I was thinking about saying that. Yeah, like yeah. that's it's such a hard thing to say. This is my favorite match of all time. Like it's just you know, good question, but mm-hmm. hard to answer. But the one at WrestleMania 17, wasn't that the match? You fucking like, son was... of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for it. I was waiting for it. <laughs> wasn't that the they had like a time limit and they had to do some submissions and shit? Listen, this isn't the best wishes from Tully Blanchard type thing. Yeah. <laughs> I have God's thing. I have my thing, okay? <laughs> Ours is better, though. No, it isn't. Um... <laughs> And the last question here actually comes from a guy named Dave Metzer. There's no L. Oh, I didn't <laughs> notice that before. 
I just I just read it as Meltzer. Did you think that Dave Meltzer listened to our fucking Well, podcast? I figured somebody made a Dave account that said Dave Meltzer maybe, on it. Maybe Dave Meltzer is moonlighting as Dave Metzer, and he doesn't <laughs> want us to know. <laughs> <laughs> he just Dave goes Meltzer, on and listens Dave to Meltzer like... Meltzer has some dark shit going on because... Yeah, he's got is, some real dark uh, his shit. His question is, which serial killer slash mass murderer would you like to meet and why? I assume that them murdering us is off the table. Let's say that we're going to meet them, like, and in jail as, like, a visitor of theirs. Because, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not going to meet him if I'm going to die. <laughs> that is a hard question, though, because when I saw this earlier, I kind of was like... The United the States fuck? of America. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> but, like, after reading it, there are, <laughs> I got there are a that. lot of... But I got it. <laughs> There are a lot of uh, serial killers that would be really interesting to talk to because a lot of them are, like, really intelligent. And, you know, I mean, if you wanted to learn, that's yeah. that's where to go, I guess. But just, like, learning their mind and stuff, too. I always thought that, like, those kind of shows were, were interesting where they talk to serial killers and guys on death row. Fuck. I mean, you could say a lot of different names. Yeah, he'd be he'd be an interesting one to to talk to for sure. Jim Jones. Who? Jim Jones actually Jim would Jones probably be, be another one. Who but, was the first one you said, Nick? Manson. Manson. But is uh, number one, Jim Jones is dead. But so number Manson. two, um, would he be counted as a serial killer slash mass murderer? Because I mean, they all I mean, followed technically, him. Technically, yeah. yeah. I guess. Definitely I mean, yes. they count Manson as a mass murderer. He didn't really m- murder anybody. Mm. Stay tuned for our conspiracy theory there. podcast coming soon. <laughs> um. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, if, if we're if we're broadening the serial killer, mass murderer spectrum, or whatever you want to call it, I would say Jim Jones for sure. Yeah, because I mean. The way that he got those people to believe him is just so incredible. Have yeah. you ever heard the um the the final audio from that day? Uh, I did, but isn't it on the dock? Yeah, there's a, there's one on the dock. Plus, you can just listen to it on YouTube. But it, it is fucking cool, man. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, God. it's fucking bizarre, man. Um, I don't know who I'd probably want to sit and I'd probably want to sit and talk with Manson, even though he didn't really kill anybody, because I've seen interviews with him and they're really kooky. Yeah, he's because a- people ask him shit like, uh, "So, Mr. Manson, how how does it feel being locked up all these years?" And his response is like, "Well, I'm not locked up. You people out there walking around, you guys are locked up, and here I'm free." And I'm like, "Whoa, it's <laughs> it's hard to believe, or it's hard to." I think differentiates sometimes whether he's you know, like working or shooting though. Like yeah. I think he he does that, and I think he does it so well that like people don't really realize. That and probably he knows what he's doing. Probably another mass murderer I wouldn't mind talking to is George W. Bush. <laughs> yeah, very good. <laughs> very good. Yeah. Um, but no, I, th- I think years. Dahmer Dahmer would have been really cool to sit and talk to. Yeah. 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 Jack the Ripper. Hey Jeff, can we can we talk over some ice cream? No, but I have Ben and Jerry in the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, that was good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that was our last question there. And now we move on to our vintage pick of the week, which is usually a match, a segment. It could be fucking old commercial like Paul Orndorff pimping off Hulkamania gear. Uh, <laughs> could be anything, really. So, uh, Shelby. No, yes. you know Nick, give us your vintage pick of the week. Fine. <laughs> My vintage pick of the week, it was uh, during a best of five series in TNA. It was match number four, Ultimate X, between the Motor City Machine Guns and Beer Money, Inc. Hmm. Huh, I don't even remember the best of five. Yeah, me neither. Not that one. Yeah. It was the best of five over the tag titles. Hmm. Uh, Beer Money started at two to nothing. And then, um, and they kept winning, like, so they won two to nothing first off, like, via the beer bottle spot. And then the third match, Motor City won in a ladder. 
match, and then it was Ultimate X the next round. Um, and I think they did go to five matches. But I was really hoping for a Motor City Machine Guns reunion in NXT or some shit. I was too. We got the time splitters for one night. Yeah, it wasn't as good. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know the time splitters as well. I mean, I watched TNA during like Motor City Machine Guns and a big part of their career. Yeah, so, <clears throat> Shelby, Vince's pick of the week. All right. So mine comes from SummerSlam 93. SummerSlam related, SummerSlam month, SummerSlam, and this this weekend. Um, the match is uh, Jerry Lawler versus Bret Hart. And I actually didn't realize that they actually wrestled. And the first time I watched this pay-per-view, when I saw Doink come out, I fucking skipped the whole match. And I actually watched it this time. And it is a great, cool, old school I'm match. I'm the true king um, out here, Brett. <laughs> just him, like, fucking smacking Brett with the fucking crutch and, like, jabbing it into him while the ref's distracted by the Hart brothers. Like, oh, Jerry Lawler was such a great heel. He really I love was. Jerry Ballard, man. Fuck me, he was good. Um, wow, I actually have the 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 latest vintage pick of the week. <laughs> My vintage pick of the week comes from Great American Bash, nineteen ninety one. Oh wow! Yeah, and that is Sting versus Nikita Koloff in a chain match. Ooh. Um, uh, I usually I, I I remember watching this match on videotape a long you know years ago and shit. And I just always really liked the finish. And the finish was, you know, of course, um, uh, Sting is, like, dragging Koloff, and he's touching the corners. Koloff is touching him, too. So they get to the fourth corner, and Sting backs up and runs for a Stinger splash. But in doing so, he splashes Koloff in the corner, therefore making Koloff touch the fourth corner and giving him the win. Oh, my God. Yeah, I fucking always loved that finish, man. I always thought it was a fun match to watch. Even though Great American Bash is, like, considered one of WCW's worst fucking pay-per-views ever. Yeah, yeah. I do want to check out that match now, though, because I haven't yeah. seen that match. Yeah, it, it, I, I always found it entertaining. I tried finding it on YouTube the other day, but um, I couldn't find it. Um, and, you know, the Peacock yeah. and shit. Yeah, so. yeah. All right. There's the bell. So you know what that means. It means that is the end of the three-way dance wrestling podcast. We will be back next week, unfortunately, with uh, summer song, <laughs> summer, yeah, summer songs, uh, where we talk about our top twenty songs of the summer. Um, Hell yeah! <laughs> no, but we will do summer slam, and possibly, and possibly take over since these two fucking acted like I said, "Hey, can I drop my nuts in your mouth?" Uh, when they, when I said, "Let's do takeover," um, so. That might be done. It might not be done. Who knows? Um, so, yeah. So, leave your questions in the comments down below. And uh, we'll, please don't make me have to fucking threaten to kill furry animals and shit again next week just to get you guys to ask some questions yeah. unless your name is not Stug or Andrew. Um, yeah. Because, yeah, I mean, I'm going to have to start putting that picture of a kitten with a gun to its head. Ask questions or the cat gets it. Um so, yeah, until next time, guys, I'm the Artist Version 1, and for Shelby and Nick, be breezy. <laughs>